Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be implementing anti-aliasing using FBOs. So a few videos ago we implemented anti-aliasing using multi-sampling with a method that was specific to lightweight Java game library. However, now that we're using a post-processing pipeline and our scene is being rendered to FBOs and not straight to the screen, you might have noticed that we once again have the problem of pixelated edges to the objects in our scene. This is because the code that we used before only works for the default frame buffer, which is the one that gets displayed on the screen. The only thing that we're rendering to that frame buffer anymore is a single textured quad, and the main rendering of our scene is being rendered to a separate FBO, an FBO that isn't multi-sampled. So this week we're going to be having a look at how we can use multi-sampling with FBOs, which will be a multi-sampling method that works with any implementation of OpenGL, and not just lightweight Java game library. To do this, instead of first rendering the scene to a normal FBO, we're first going to be rendering it to a multi-sampled FBO. Hopefully you remember that when we create FBOs, we add various attachments to them, such as a colour buffer and a depth buffer, and to create a multi-sampled FBO is no different. We still have to add a colour buffer attachment and a depth buffer attachment, and we're going to be using render buffers for these attachments, because we won't need to sample them in the shaders. The only difference is that we're going to be using multi-sampled render buffers as attachments, rather than just the usual render buffers. And creating multi-sampled render buffers is extremely simple. All we have to do is to use the GL render buffer storage multi-sample method instead of the usual GL render buffer storage method when we're creating the render buffer, and this method takes in one extra parameter which indicates how many samples should be used for the multi-sampling. This will give us a multi-sampled FBO that we can render our scene to, and once we've done that, the FBO will contain a multi-sampled image of the scene with multiple samples per pixel. However, we can't really use this data yet because this isn't a normal FBO, this has multiple samples per pixel, and if you remember from my other multi-sampling tutorial, the multi-sampled FBO needs to be resolved first before we can use it. To resolve the multi-sampled image data, we're going to be using the glblit frame buffer method, which copies data from one frame buffer into another, and it will automatically resolve the multi-sampled image if the first FBO is multi-sampled and the second one isn't. So we'll need to have a second FBO which isn't multi-sampled, and then each frame we'll render the scene to the multi-sampled FBO, and then blit it to the non-multi-sampled FBO to resolve it, and turn it back into a normal image. And by doing that, the edges of all the objects in our scene will be anti-aliased. So this does involve one extra step than before, but now this FBO here will contain an anti-aliased image of the scene that we can then use in the post-processing pipeline. Alternatively, if you don't want to do any post-processing, you can actually just resolve the multi-sampled FBO straight into the default frame buffer, which is the one that gets displayed on the screen. So in the code, the first thing that we're going to do is to remove any blurring that we've got in the post-processing pipeline at the moment, and the contrast changer is just going to take in the colour texture which is just an image of the scene, and this is just so that we can see the effect of the anti-aliasing when we've done it, because obviously if everything is blurred we won't really be able to tell the difference. So if you go ahead and run that you should now be able to see the lack of anti-aliasing that we currently have in the game. As I mentioned earlier, this is because the previous code that we were using for multi-sampling only works with the default frame buffer, and we actually need to remove this code, otherwise it's going to interfere with the new code, uh, but we still need to make sure that we're enabling multi-sampling at some point. So let's now go into the frame buffer object class, and in here we're going to add a boolean, which will indicate whether the frame buffer should be multi-sampled or not, and I'm going to initially set this to false. I'm now going to create a second constructor which we're going to use whenever we want to create an FBO which is multi-sampled, and this isn't going to take in the depth buffer type because for multi-sample FBOs we're always going to use a render buffer as the depth buffer because we never need to sample a multi-sample FBO in the shaders. Also we're going to set multi-sampling to true whenever we use this constructor. So when the FBO is initialized it creates a color buffer and a depth buffer attachment and we need to make sure that when it does this, that it creates multi-sampled attachments uh, instead of just normal attachments. So in the create depth buffer attachment, uh, we're still going to want to generate the depth buffer, we're still going to want to bind that render buffer, and we're still going to want to attach that render buffer to the FBO as the depth buffer. What we're going to change is this part here where we indicate what type of data should be stored in that render buffer. So if we're not using multi-sampling, then we can just use the same method, 
Otherwise, we're going to use a similar method. Um, the only difference is that it's called, instead of GL render buffer storage, it's called GL render buffer storage multi sample to indicate that this should be a multi sample render buffer. And it has one extra parameter, which is the second parameter, which is the number of samples that should be used. And I'm going to set that to four. So we also need to do this for the color buffer attachment. And we don't actually have a method to create a render buffer color buffer attachment. So we're going to create one here. So this will create a multi sample render buffer for the color attachment. So the first thing we need to do, just like with the depth buffer, is we need to generate a render buffer by calling GL gen render buffers. We then want to bind the render buffer so that we can use it and make sure that you're binding the color buffer and not the depth buffer. We then need to call that GL render buffer storage multi sample to indicate that we're going to be storing multi sample data in here. And of course, this isn't the depth component. This is now color data. So the type of data that we're going to be storing is RGBA8. And the 8 just indicates that each component uses 8 bits. And then we're going to attach this to the frame buffer. And of course, this isn't the depth attachment. This is, in fact, a color attachment. And it's going to be GL color attachment 0. And make sure that you're not storing the depth buffer here. You're storing the color buffer. So when we initialize the FBO now, we need to use this method if the FBO should be multi-sampled. So here we're going to check if we're using multi-sampling then we're going to use that new method to create the color attachment. Otherwise, we can just use the previous method, which creates a normal texture attachment. So all of this allows us to render our scene into a multi-sampled FBO. But a multi-sampled FBO isn't really much use to us because we can't really very easily sample it in the shaders. So we need to resolve this into another FBO, which will then have the anti-aliased image of the scene. So we're going to create a method here called resolve to FBO, and this is going to take in the output FBO, which we're going to be resolving into. We then need to bind the draw and read frame buffers to determine which is the input and output frame buffer here. So we're going to be drawing into the output frame buffer. We're going to be resolving this frame buffer into the output frame buffer. So we bind the output FBO as the draw frame buffer, and as the read frame buffer, we need to bind this frame buffer so it knows that it's resolving from this frame buffer into the output frame buffer. We then need to call that GL blitz frame buffer method, which I talked about earlier, and that takes in the dimensions of the input and the output FBO. It also needs to know which buffers it should copy across, and I'm saying that it should resolve both the color and the depth buffer because we're going to be using the depth buffer at some point. And this last bit just determines what kind of filtering it should use if the two FBOs are different sizes. Uh, but that's not going to be the case here, so that doesn't really matter. And finally, in this method, we're just going to unbind the frame buffers. So that method allows us to resolve the FBO to another FBO, but as I mentioned earlier, there is another option, and that is to resolve the FBO straight to the screen, or to the default frame buffer. And to do this is pretty similar, so we can actually just copy and paste a lot of this code and just make a couple of small changes. So the draw frame buffer is now going to be the default frame buffer, and for that we just have to put zero. The read frame buffer is obviously still this frame buffer, and the dimensions of the output frame buffer are now going to be the dimensions of the display. So that's going to be display.getWidth and display.getHeight. We can also specify which buffer of the default frame buffer we want to render to or want to copy to, and that's either the front buffer or the back buffer, and we're going to be blitting to the back buffer here. And of course, we only want to blit the color buffer so we can remove the depth buffer bit because there's no point blitting the depth buffer to the screen. So in the main game loop class, we now want to render our scene to a multi-sampled FBO. So I'm just going to rename this FBO to multi-sample FBO so that we know what it is. And I'm going to change the constructor and remove this last parameter so that it creates a multi-sampled FBO, which we're going to render the scene to. We're also going to need that second FBO, which we're going to resolve into. So this is going to be the output FBO, and this isn't a multi-sampled FBO, uh, so it does need a depth buffer, and I'm going to create a, a depth texture attachment for that. And before we forget, let's remember to clean this up. So in the game loop, we are rendering the whole scene to the multi-sampled FBO, and once that has happened, we want to resolve that multi-sampled FBO into the output FBO. And we can do that by calling multi-sample FBO.resolve to FBO, 
and putting in the output FBO. So once that has happened, the output FBO will contain a anti-aliased image of the scene, which we're then going to use in our post-processing pipeline. So if you go ahead and run that, hopefully your scene should now once again be anti-aliased. And before we finish, let's just try that other option, which is to resolve the multi-sample FBO straight to the screen after we've rendered the scene to it. And if we do that, obviously we can't do the post-processing afterwards because we won't have an image of the scene. But if you go ahead and run that, hopefully everything should look nice and anti-aliased. Um, but of course, the contrast won't have changed because we're now skipping out that post-processing stage. So that is going to be it for this week. Next time we're probably going to be having a look at the Bloom effect and that video will be out in two weeks time. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.